<laughs> right, just put it out there. Okay. I think we're live on YouTube and I think we're live on Facebook there. So, as you can see, we're outside um, BBC Broadcasting House here in Belfast. Have we coverage? Can anyone hear? Or just waiting to see? Or checking, are we live? <laughs> two green dots I have. Are we live? No, just checking on, uh, what's that whole label? Facebook's good. Okay, I'm just waiting to get confirmation of uh, YouTube. Okay, so we're good on both. Okay, come back out now, take me. Uh, am I in it? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Justice for Aaron Brady campaign. We're following up on um, the call we made to Virgin Media in Dublin last week and a uh, plea and demand of Moran O'Connell that questions be asked in relation to uh, Aaron's framing and the conviction, the false conviction of Aaron for the murder of Detective Gab Adrian Donoghue. So to that end, we are going to continue uh, to uh, hand out uh, information and details. And initially today, we're going to deal with some media outlets in Belfast. And um, the first one is uh, we're going to go to the BBC. We're showing this to the... Uh, the Nolan Show. So, uh, for clarity, what we want to do is ask each individual, rather than uh, putting all the information together, what we are going to do is ask each individual person and each individual corporation, such as the BBC or the Stephen Nolan Show in particular, what we're going to look for with the Stephen Nolan Show, all, each and every one of the envelopes we'll hand out over the coming weeks will be have this picture here. Is that quite clear there, Kate? Okay? Yep. Can you see that there? Yep. yep. This picture. And uh, what we're showing the public here is obviously there's Aaron, myself, Caroline and Aaron. Aaron, is that picture in the frame? Yep. yep. Uh, Aaron's five foot seven. The two men that uh, attacked the car, we can see quite clearly, are over six feet tall. Uh, the man who attacked uh, Bernard McShane's car is just under six foot and had a Dublin accent. The man who attacked Pat Bellew's car uh, is also five foot ten, five foot eleven. And vitally important, the information on the back of the photographs here tells us that um, the Statements from the witnesses confirm what the CCTV footage shows. So there's no ambiguity, there's no room for uh, any guessing or um, <clears throat> no suppos supposition here. This is fact, this is details. So um, obviously um, Stephen Nolan show will be getting a copy of that, along with a copy of the statements, the relevant parts of the statements that are... Um, detailing exactly what we are seeing. The four men, the four men who attacked the Lordship uh, Credit Union car park that night, the four men are all taller than Aaron Brady. So therefore, it's quite simple. Aaron Brady is innocent. Aaron Brady had nothing to do with the murder and robbery at Lordship Credit Union. So what we've also... Um, and what we're going to focus on here in Northern Ireland in particular with the media, uh, we're going to uh, focus in a little bit on the two men who uh, allegedly came forward uh, to make st statements against Aaron in New York. The two men originally from Northern Ireland, from Mike, just outside Newry, and we're talking here in particular about Christopher Morton and Anthony Gerard Maguire. Now, we've put uh, a number of documents in here in relation in particular to Anthony Gerard Maguire's criminal record, um, in 2014, he was caught with 20, uh, 30,000 pounds of cocaine and 30,000 pounds of cash. He was caught with ammunition, caught with marijuana. He absconded, left his uh, partner and his kids behind him and absconded to America. Now, the part we want the BBC to look at and all the journalists here in Northern Ireland, 
Anthony Gerald Maguire was extradited back to Northern Ireland in January 2023. After a number of brief uh, visits to the Crown Court in Newry and Belfast, Anthony Gerald Maguire was allowed back into America. Now, you just have to concentrate on that for a second. How can someone, how can a drug dealer be allowed back into America when he uh, obviously broke all the rules on his ESTA, his ESTA waiver visa? And this is where we want the investigation to take place. His first cousin coincidentally uh, gave a statement against Aaron, and we said the man who most likely orchestrated these people to tell lies against Aaron, to get money, and to get green cards to save their lives in America. Because uh, Christopher Martin is not welcome back in Ireland. He was caught stealing from those he worked with. Uh, paramilitaries called to his home and he was uh, more or less told to leave Northern Ireland. And indeed, Anthony Gerald Maguire, after he left uh, Northern Ireland, there were shots fired into his um, home just immediately after he left and absconded from Northern Ireland. So this is the quality of the people that we are expected to accept as uh, ordinary decent people who care about Adrian Donoghue and Adrian Donoghue's family and who came forward uh, to give statements against Aaron Brady. Everything those men said in their statements is a tissue of lies. So this is what we are looking for the BBC and any investigative journalist here in Northern Ireland to look into. Uh, we've also uh, focused in a little bit on to show that the circumstantial evidence used against Aaron, and it was admitted, it was admitted by the prosecution in the court in Dublin by Brendan Grehan, that uh, the circumstantial evidence was very, very weak and very, very poor, and only for the statements of the criminals in America, Aaron Brady couldn't be convicted. So we've put in a little bit of information about the burn site and the total inaccuracies, how the times were tampered with, how the CCTV footage was tampered with, and how the um, Irish authorities manipulated through the courts, uh, well, they weren't facts, they were lies, and they created them into facts, which led to the circumstantial evidence being used against Aaron in the courtroom. So, uh, as I say, that's uh, part of the pack for, um, and we just addressed it to the Stephen Nolan show because we are aware of Stephen Nolan, um, his show, and obviously his producers and those working with and alongside Mr. Nolan. Uh, we hope we'll look at this, contact the Justice Fire and Brady campaign, and hopefully we can pose the questions. Uh, for these people, or we can give these people the questions to ask the authorities and seek information. We are gravely in need of assistance with freedom of information, uh, both here in Northern Ireland, in uh, the UK, in London, and in, indeed in uh, the United States of America. And who better than the BBC to ask for that assistance? And. So the second person we're going to leave an envelope for here in um, in the BBC today is um, Aileen Miner. Now Aileen's a journalist, and uh, we have been told by a number of people a very able, fair, and a very professional journalist who I believe has been involved in a number of very important um, documentaries and. Um, has brought some very burning issues uh, to the fore in the, to the public here in Northern Ireland and indeed the UK and Ireland itself. So Aileen, um, in your um, envelope, again, we're, we're going to show you the, uh, the facts that it's physically impossible for Aaron Brady to have been involved in the murder. It just simply cannot happen. All the men who were in that car park are as tall as me, and as you can see there, just set this blue over here, just keep a hand on it. That all the men who were in the car park are as tall or taller than I am, and there's Aaron standing beside me. So again, that's the starting point for Aileen, and 
what we've asked Erling to do is look at is the bond safe and we'll be more than happy just to sit with Erling and discuss this little aspect is one of the aspects of the Aaron's case and trial. Now, we have hundreds, uh, hund uh, literally hundreds of serious uh, abnormalities, corruption, coercion, perjury. Uh, the list is endless. And rather than um, bogging anyone down with the uh, vast, vast quality, quantities of information, Aileen, we are asking you, please, just have a look at this one area and you will see how ridiculous, ridiculous it is, how ludicrous it is. And we've just given you a, a, a few small details of how the judge handled the circumstantial evidence. And I will repeat once again that Brendan Graham told us in court that the circumstantial evidence was weak and the circumstantial evidence was poor. And we needed... We needed the um, the testimony and the statements from the criminals, the illegal immigrants, the drug dealers in America to try and get a conviction against Aaron. But the circumstantial evidence, I promise you, Ailey Minor, the BBC, all journalists watching this and the public, I promise you the circumstantial evidence that was put forward will prove will prove that Aaron Brady and James Flynn were not anywhere near the bond site on the 25th of January 2013. Uh, and to give some idea of what we fought in the courtroom, again, and this is the judiciary, the people who were overseeing the case, the judges, and um, one vital, vital little piece of information that was um, taken from the bond site, a witness, a farmer at the bond site, and I'm just going to read very quickly uh, two or three statements, uh, two or three lines from this man's statement. Windows, in, windows dark in the car, the front lights were blue. The car was black and had blue, sky blue bulbs in the lights, but it definitely had blue headlights. I am 100% happy it was a 5 Series BMW. I am 100% happy it had blue headlights or blue bulbs. And Judge Tony Hunt, in his wisdom, said that that man's statement was subjective. It was a subjective perspective that man has, totally eradicating the fact that the car that drove past that man's house on that night, on the 25th of January, had blue bulbs in the headlights. And why is this so important? Well, it is simply so important because James Flynn, who is now serving, also serving time for the theft of a car, James Flynn's BMW did not, did not have blue bulbs. So therefore, the vehicle that drove past that farmer's house in Cortamlet near Newtown Hamilton in his county Armagh that night was not James Flynn. So we are making these statements. So if we just take the two things we are handing over to Aileen um, Minor here today. Aileen, all we want you to do is just possibly come sit down with us, uh, have a look at the information as regards to phone space. And we believe if each uh, journalist has a look at a separate area, one piece of the the trial and the investigation, we will open a can of worms that will continue to open another can of worms, that will open another can of worms, that will open another can of worms, that will ultimately prove to, to everyone uh, something that everyone now knows. Aaron Brady did not, could not have more than Detective Gard Adrian Donahue. And we are begging, we are demanding that the mainstream media stand up and investigate these uh, claims we are making here today. They're not claims, they're facts. We have facts, details, and um, for all of everything we say. So uh, I'm going to go inside now. I see the security man's watching me. He knows I'm coming across. I'll, I'll keep the mics on, and Kyle will just take the cameras over to the front door. I don't think they allow the cameras inside. I'll hand the... Um, End groups over. I'll see. I'll, I'll ask for um, if I can speak to someone in the production team or availing mine is available. And um, 
we'll uh, see what happens and I'll come back to you after that. So I think Clay's just going to follow me over the road. If you just leave uh, the camera outside. <coughs> so I'm just heading over here, BBC Melbourne now. I think, Clay, if you just keep the camera there, just keep it facing the back there, don't get anyone's picture. Hello, how's things? Are you recording? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm just recording sound, yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. No, we didn't take the cameras in. Okay. That all right? Yeah. yeah Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. It's probably not catching us out there anyways. Right, okay. <laughs> well, not that highly sophisticated. Okay. Hello. I, yeah, I'm just, I'm recording. I just wanted to leave uh, two envelopes in. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm not sure now if anything's full time, but I wonder, if, is it possible you could get that one? Yeah, and um, I want to leave that in for the Stephen show. Is there any possibility someone just speak to me about what it is? Uh, no, I, 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 all I can do is ask. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, we'll do that. that would be lovely. Thank you. That's brilliant. Um, that's what we are with the Justice for Alan Brady yeah. campaign. So I'm, I'm Aaron's dad. Yeah. 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 So that's hopefully, yeah, yeah, that's who, that's who these are from. Okay. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it, folks. I don't know whether you heard me inside. The people very, very nice, very polite. And uh, I've handed over the envelopes, and I'm sure they'll make their way to uh, Aileen and to the Stephen Nolan show. Uh, we will be contacting them via email, and we will also uh, follow up possibly your phone calls to see if uh, the messages have received. And uh, is there no sound? So, um, yeah, we're good. Thumbs up. So, that's it. We're going to move on to the next protocol. Uh, so, we've left that with the Stephen Nolan show and with Ailey Minor, and hopefully, we will get some uh, response. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in about 10 minutes at our next destination.